Oh, wow. And sometimes they did, but sometimes they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all that sugar in there and all the cost of the sugar is an awful waste of money. Right. And so that's why we're requiring that you requ suggest it. We're making the recommendation that you process, water bath process them. Okay. And it only takes 10 or 15 minutes. I mean, it's not like it's a huge amount. And they're but pretty high acid. So. Right. And there's all a lot of sugar in there, so the mm -hmm. heat's going to stay there really a long time. Then you bring them out of the food processor, out of the food bath, water bath, and then line them up on your newspaper, a clean newspaper, mm -hmm. and then let them sit for 12 hours at least. To now, if, you can, if you're in a hot, air-conditioned kitchen, it might be 24 hours. Okay. But you want to make sure you hear the ding when the dome... See, we, I've opened that one. When I turned it upside down, I broke the seal. Oh, no. That was sealed when we came in. I'll have to use it. That's right. No problem. I'll no use it problem. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't hear a noise, you know it's sealed. Yeah, pretty clear difference. Very, very much a, a, a difference in them. And so that um, you can make, uh, that's the processed cooked jams and jellies. And these in, the, in this basket, I, I need to brag a little bit about this. This is These are Pat Overman's je uh, jellies from the county fair from 2008. And we have cherry and pineapple, and we have cranberry, and we have apple, and we have green pepper. Green pepper. Used on lamb. Mm, and fancy. pomegranate. And m many of these were done with fruit juices rather than you know, taking pomegranate and cooking it down and then mm -hmm. hanging it in the bag. But you'll notice how sparkly clear they are. This happened to be the grand champion um, basket of jams and jellies. Mm -hmm. And she went ahead because of the contest uh, process of the fair. She went ahead and presented it in the basket with the jewels mm -hmm. to make the sparkly jellies and the jewels match. Oh, very nice. So added added that little bit of extra, which Pat always loves to do. Mm. And so these jam, great most as of, a gift. I can and imagine. these would be great gifts for people, uh, great hostess gifts, um, and they're great for people who are living by themselves because mm -hmm. a little jar like this can be used and not spoil. Yeah. Where if they buy one in the store, the the jars are too big. Mm -hmm. And who wants to eat strawberry jam for six months? Right. Um, peanut butter and jelly is one thing, but to have to eat it that way all the time would be something else. But then we also have uncooked jams and jellies. Uncooked? Mm-hmm. And the th difference is that you cook them. I mean, mm -hmm. you prepare the sugar syrup, all that stuff together, but mm -hmm. you don't process it. Okay. But you put it in the freezer. So it's referred to as freezer jam and jelly. Oh. And you have to freeze it, and it's soft. It's very soft. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that you either keep in the freezer and, you know, spoon it out so you can spread it. Or if it's in the refrigerator, you spread it really fast and eat it really fast because it drips through the bread. Oh, okay. But, you know, there, if you've got freezer space mm -hmm. and you don't want to process and you don't have jars, mm -hmm. uh, the uncooked or the, we refer to them as freezer jams and jellies, you can put in any kind of a container. Okay, so, so a you little have, more convenient. Right, sometimes. a little more convenient and... And storage-wise, you know, if you've got the freezer space, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, and some people enjoy the it's the strawberry jam has a little fresher taste to it mm -hmm. uh, because it's not been cooked as long. Right. But um, preserves some flavor. Right. Sometimes. But once once you've opened it, it needs to be kept in the refrigerator or freezer. You can't put it out on the shelf. Okay. Whereas your jams and jellies that you've processed in the hot water bath, if you're going to use it in a reasonable amount of time, can be shelf stable. Okay. And so that's, that's one of the food safety things of it, too. And then we also, and these are bulletins from the extension office. We can also make jams and jellies without sugar. And with more and more people dealing with the issue of diabetes, that is a publication that we have mm -hmm. available uh, that you use artificial sweeteners in. And I'm not going to go into a lot of depth with it because it's very individualized as to which sweetener you use with how much mm -hmm. uh, juice and all of that kind of thing. And then we also have one on uh, how to preserve the jams and jellies with the recipes. And people Wonderful. are always after recipes. And these are free free by calling the office or if you have um, uh, a computer and can get to the website, mm -hmm. uh, you can use it that way. In fact, yeah. I just opened it up and here's our peach jam from our workshop last Yay. year. And it called for two so cups tasty. of peeled peaches and half a cup of water and six cups of sugar. Yep, lots and of sugar. <laughs> lots of sugar. Jams and Decadent. jellies are not low calorie. Uh, I always tease a little bit and say that, you know, if you stand up, you can, the calories don't count because most people don't have fat feet. 
but it still <laughs> counts along the way. So, but we have these publications that are available free at the Extension Office, and Stephanie has them also in copies mm -hmm. at the at the food pantry at Mother Hubbard Cupboards. And then you can also get them in the in the two books that we um, can get at the at the uh, bookstore. Here, um, one is by Kerr, and the other one Kerr. is by Ball. And they have not only how to do things, but also some really neat recipes. And this actually is where Pat got her recipes for her Grand Champion jellies was out right. of this book. And uh, one year she made jams and or she made a basket of jellies with all wine flavors. Fancy. So you know, just really fancy, fun things to do. So mm -hmm. jams and jellies are something that you can have a lot of fun with. Uh, make a lot of different variations. And like I said earlier, I took maraschino juice because my girlfriend girlfriend's husband worked at a bar mm -hmm. and you get those huge containers of maraschino cherries to, mm -hmm. to do drinks with mm -hmm. but there's all this juice right. it's also got all the sugar in it mm -hmm. and so when you're a student and you have no money but you've got gifts to give mm -hmm. they, um, Joe just brought the, the literally gallons of mm -hmm. maraschino cherry juice home and Donna and I then made jelly out of it yeah. and it made a beautiful I mean it was it was even redder than this because it had a lot of food coloring in it, which, wow. you know, today I wouldn't use, but, right. you know, 30 years ago it was okay. And um, made beautiful gifts out mm -hmm. of it, and everybody appreciated it. And, again, we recycled something that mm -hmm. otherwise would have been poured down the drain. So we were recycling right. and didn't even know it. <laughs> we, were, we were just being cheap. <laughs> yeah, with, with a little bit of thought, the, the creative uh, and tasty things we can do. Pretty impressive. Exactly. And jams and jellies are something that everyone can enjoy. Mm -hmm. And you can process them in the little tiny jars. They've got some really cute little, I think they hold half a cup. Oh, I've seen those. They're yeah, just they're little itty ones. bitty ones. Yeah. But then you can give people several of them in a basket or you mm -hmm. know in a gift bag. And anything homemade is always appreciated because they know you, you've given Especially some time. Especially now. It, exactly. It's really exactly. going out of your way in a different kind of way. Exactly. So remember that you need to process jams and jellies. Do not flip them upside down, even, even if the pectin package says it, because the pectin packages, some of them have been packaged since the early 60s and are still being sold in the stores. So even now we shouldn't tip them upside down? No. Because mm -mm. I just did. Oh, no, no, that's okay. <laughs> but as processing. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't process Good. them by tipping them upside down. Great. Okay. okay. But um, pectin is, is non-destructible. Mm -hmm. So pectin in packages are going may have been packaged at, before the new Tipping, the, right. tipping it up. So don't tip them upside down to process okay, them. Okay. That's okay? good. Water bath them. And if you're making freezer jam, you don't have to water bath, and you can put them in any kind of container that you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, remembering that jellies are clear, jams are mushed up fruit, preserves, preserves are whole fruit, fruit and conserves have, have the nuts, nuts added to them. And right. so when it comes to Jeopardy and Trivial yeah. Pursuit, you've got those answers down nice and pat. Right. Uh, remember to time them uh, the way they say, because timing is a key due to the boiling process and mm -hmm. getting the water done. Now, one of the questions I get quite often is somebody gets wanting to make jam and jelly on a day like today where it's mm -hmm. raining outside and the barometric mm -hmm. pressure is really low and their jams and jellies don't set up. And that's because it affected the boiling point oh. by just a, a degree or two. Mm -hmm. And so basically, if you have a jam or jelly that doesn't set up, you can take it out of the jars, wash your jars, start all over again and bring it back to a boil. Oh, okay. And that quite often will make it work. Okay. So don't throw it away. You know me. Yeah. I don't want to waste anything. Uh, but you can do it that way. But mm -hmm. usually I recommend that if you're going to make jams and jellies and you don't want to have to go back through and reprocess everything, is to choose a day that is a pretty day mm -hmm. where the barometric pressure is up and where the boiling point is really the true boiling point. Okay. And if you move yeah. to some of the upper altitudes, you've got to look at the recipes because the timing is going to change. Right. Because if you go to Colorado, which I have a brother living there, mm -hmm. that they have to learn to cook a whole different way because of the altitude. Wow. And so, again, checking your recipes are very important. And keeping your kitchen clean, making sure all of your equipment is clean is very, very important, along with processing so that your jams and jellies will not have mold. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't scrape it off and think you can use the rest of it because mold has little roots. Right. And little That'd roots can safe. cause you just as sick as... The fuzzy stuff on top, and remember, don't use the the um, WEC, WEC jars, W E C K, 
which are very popular in a lot of the kitchen stores.